Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Riley, founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. Um, today, we're going to work with a tool called Napkin, napkin.ai, uh, which is, can be used for creating various visualizations. Uh, it's good at creating static pie charts, bar charts, flow charts, mind maps, images, uh, you know, various types of data graphics. Um, I wouldn't sub out, uh, you know, sub it in for anything like uh, Data Wrapper or, uh, you know, Vengage even or uh, Canva, uh, you know, Flourish, any of those tools. Um, but it can do some some quick and dirty images uh, for you uh, using AI uh, and maybe a little bit of data. Uh, and uh, it would work well for maybe a, a slideshow presentation or just a real basic chart to accompany a blog post or a story of some kind. Um, Napkin uh, is currently free. I'm recording this in uh, uh, the middle of uh, uh, January. Um, so the starter plan and professional plans are currently at zero uh, during beta and enterprise plan. Uh, pro plan and enterprise plans will eventually uh, you know, uh, have dollar figures assigned to a prime monthly fees and um, possibly with some price breaks too for uh, if you pay it in a lump sum. Um, but it tells you, you know, what you get uh, for, for that. Um, and you can create up to, uh, you know, three for the free account, uh, I think on a weekly basis. So, um, yeah, uh, real, you know, nice little starter package here. You can sign in with your Gmail account uh, and uh, have it set up or with your email if you prefer that. Um, and pretty easy tool to use. Uh, toolbar down the left-hand side really gives you what you want to work with. Uh, when you first come into the tool, it will give you this library. And down the left-hand side, you can go back and look at your past charts and graphics. Um, so uh, I'm going to start a new one uh, and then show you uh, some of them I've created in the past. Uh, just show you how this works very quickly. Um, you can create what's called a new napkin. Um, and you can do a draft with AI. That's where you ask it to, you know, go and research a topic and then create a chart from it. Um, I've done that with a couple of examples. I, I prefer to bring in uh, my own data uh, and import it into Napkin. In that case, I start with what's called a blank Napkin up here in the upper left. Um, and you can put in your title. Uh, I'm going to do one with some Chicago homicides data. long headline, but it does give you a headline that you can insert. Uh, and then I'm going to go just grab the data. Um, and this is just a little spreadsheet I have. Uh, and I take the header with it. Row one is year. Uh, uh, column one is year. Column two is uh, homicides. Uh, I'll just copy this. Uh, and this is an easy spreadsheet to upload into Data Wrapper or something. So, you know, it works almost as fast. And there's all my data. Um, so uh, I can go up here. Uh, I can select a different, you know, little graphic that I want to put in here. Um, I wouldn't put a gun or anything like that, um, you know, but I'll put, you know, maybe a calendar there uh, just as a working header. Uh, and down here is where the magic happens. It says generate visuals uh, and it'll analyze the data. It's doing its work here. And down the left-hand side, it'll give you some options and you can hover over them to see uh, what it did here. Um, so here it just kind of took uh, the headline uh, and some of the uh, highlights, uh, you know, every few years it shows on this little timeline um, uh, of what, uh, um, uh, you know, the highs and lows, you know, uh, homicides rose to 774 in 2020, start of the pandemic. They hit 778 in 2016, right around the time of Laquan McDonald shooting. Um, so they were uh, skyrocketing. And then in 2024, they have dropped actually this year. Uh, down to 572. So it just kind of hits the highlights in this little timeline uh, over the last 34 years. It's all right. Um, you know, wouldn't really use this one. Um, here's a bar chart um, showing over the years. It only goes up to 2020, but you can scroll over and see it. I'm not happy with the font, but you can click on all these and, and change them. They're uh, highly editable. Um, here's a line chart showing the same data. It kind of runs off the screen. Um, bar chart here. Uh, this one's pretty good uh, vertical uh, column chart. Um, it shows year by year numbers. Um, so you could uh, post this maybe at the end of your story. It's kind of a long vertical graphic. Um, works pretty well. Um, it gives you some other options too. Here it grouped them by decade. Kind of interesting. You can kind of see the trends. 
Um, I still would prefer the bar chart over it or, or this basic timeline. I would do one of those two um, or both. Um, uh, here it does it as a, a vertical timeline. You have to actually kind of hover, uh, you know, uh, the, to see the numbers year by year. Um, it does the, this was just a poor choice. You can generate more down here. It'll give you some other options. Usually they're not as good as the first few you saw, uh, but it has some hits and misses. So, you know, uh, if you've worked with data for a while, um, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, use it at your, uh, own discretion. Yeah. I wouldn't probably do some summary like this because it generalizes too much, you know, showing, uh, uh, the, during this era, 14 years, lower homicide rates, uh, you know, no, not actually. It, they actually peaked and then began to drop again. So, you know, sometimes it doesn't do the best job at summarizing, but it is accurate. Um, I measure the numbers against what was in my spreadsheet, and it does do a really good job of taking and grouping those numbers. So I would probably do one or both of these two, um, the bar chart or the grouped uh, kind of a, almost a mini group timeline. It's kind of a cool little graphic. Uh, and once you select it, um, you can go in uh, and you can click on the various uh, elements. Uh, you can download up here. Uh, you can uh, change the style up here. You can change your aspect ratio uh, as well um, from one to one, 16 by nine and four by five. Um, 16 by nine doesn't work because it makes it horizontal and it's just too wide. It should make the bars smaller, but it, it doesn't have that capability. Depending on the type of graphic you pick, uh, it will also allow you to go through and, and uh, uh, edit out uh, some of the uh, icons and stuff too. So if you uh, pick one of these that have a lot of icons in them, um, and I'm trying to find one here um, that has some good icons. Uh, but you can sub those in and out and you know, just click on it and give you some choices, kind of like Canva does some of the others. Um, so like with this one, you, know, you can go in here and click on it um, and it'll give you some options then. So I double clicked on it. I can change the color palette of the background, the thickness of the line, um, uh, you know, or I can generate other icons in here by hitting the little lightning bolt. The lightning bolt always is, you know, let me give you some more options and see you can hover over these and sub one of these in if I wanted something a little different in here. Um, so, you know, a lot of really great options here um, in this that you can do a lot of editing with because rarely, you know, even in the templates that I use on, you know, Data Wrapper and some of the others, I always make changes to them, colors, you know, uh, things like that. A couple of the drawbacks, you can't add, uh, uh, you know, credits or anything on here yet. Um, I'd like to be able to add the source and credit at the bottom of this chart, um, but I can't uh, right now. So, um, yeah, that's one of the drawbacks. I could probably do it in Photoshop if I wanted to. Um, it does allow you some different options, SVG file or a PDF or a ping file, um, uh, you know, if I wanted it as a vector graphic, uh, which would actually look kind of cool. Um, so I'll download this vector graphic, and then I'll download this one down here. Once I click on it, I can download it. Um, and I'll make that one a pig. Um, so I have both those images now, and I can you know paste, cut and paste them into a, uh, uh, a, a medium post or you know WordPress site or something like that, just as a regular image. Um, so it's pretty good, you know, at, at certain types of things. If you're moving data into it, um, very simple, you know, data sets like this one. Um, you know, the more complex ones, uh, you know, your results are hit and miss. Uh, here's a real simple one. Uh, this is our online reporting process for our website, the Redline Project, where my students publish to. So it's just an eight-step method that's on our principles page, explains to our readers, uh, you know, how we do it, um, how we report. Um, and you can choose, you know, any number of different uh, uh, charts and graphics. You can swap out each of these images. This is a good one because it has a lot of icons in it. And I can go through and swap these out, you know, if I wanted something else, if I wanted a different looking pin here. I could do that, you know, and share my work. I'm not wild about that one. Um, so I can go in and, uh, you know, pick something a little bit different. Kind of gives me some different logos there. Um, so um, those are some of the things you can do uh, 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 with it. Um, best practices for hiring an interview. It'll also do, you know, just basic infographic type work. Um, uh, this is one that I, uh, they're uh, standard uh uh, demos uh, that I actually took, and it, it wrote this prompt for me. And, you know, I had to pick through a few templates before I found one that I kind of like. But, you know, just kind of shows a process. It's good with pretty good with timelines. The big fail I had with it, I asked it to write a history of the Women's uh, World Cup soccer tournament. 
Uh, and then I was going to create a timeline of it. Uh, and it just wrote these really bad subheads. I should have probably regenerated this. It also had some factual errors. So it's not the best at writing for you. Um, it had it, uh, you know, said it was held in China, the Women's First World Cup. Um, uh, the U.S. actually won it in Pasadena, California. It has a couple scores wrong in here too. A couple of dates are off. So be careful with using this as you know as a research tool. Um, I prefer to move my own data in here. Uh, but as I was experimenting with it, you know, it was one of the things that I uh, had noticed in here. Um, so uh, keep that in mind when you're using Napkin. I think they'll be adding some more things here in the near future. Um, and they'll be going to a pricing model as well, so you can upgrade things. So um, remember, too, uh, you can find more data visualization tools uh, on the Journalist Toolbox under Data Tools. We also have a Scraping Tools section. Uh, the Data Tools section, I've got some custom GPTs in here that'll do some data visualizations. Um, most of them are static. Uh, Daygram, the really good one, uh, has shut down. It created interactive charts and graphics uh, using a custom GPT. It was fantastic. Um, so, um, if you go in here, you can find uh, various videos uh, for you know, data scraping and uh, you know, training videos for building a, this an election chart in Flourish. Uh, and this training video will be up there as well when I finish it. Um, also, the scraping page is uh, very rich too. We just launched it in early 2025. Um, it's got a lot of scraping tools in it as well as some uh, exercises that you can do on these videos. Um, uh, we've got more than 120 training videos up right now on our YouTube channel, which is linked off the right rail of the website. Uh, you can find uh, you know, dozens of different types of uh, uh, tools up here, AI tools, editing video and audio on your phone, data viz tools. We've got several of those up there, um, all kinds of exercises. Uh, we also have a newsletter uh, that comes out every other Tuesday uh, around 8 a.m. Eastern time. It's free unless you want to donate. Um, it typically focuses on one tool or, or topic. Uh, my last newsletter was about Sora uh, and how to use it uh, and some of the mistakes that it's making um, OpenAI's new uh, uh, video uh, production tool. Um, and you can usually get through this in about five, 10 minutes, pretty quick read. Uh, it's got other tools and training videos built into it. Um, also, uh, you can find me off of Twitter uh, or also Blue Sky Social. Uh, my Blue Sky account, uh, I'm posting there about three or four times a day now. I'm um, using it a little more often than I am uh, uh, Twitter these days. Uh, so do reach out to me on Blue Sky as well. And all of these uh, links are, are available on the right side of any page of the website. So there's training videos. Follow me on Blue Sky and the newsletter right there. Hope you enjoyed this short training. Uh, check back as we'll have many more training videos coming up uh, in the near future. Take care, everybody.